Thank you, Sags. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Molyneux. Misty Molyneux, as it appears today. We've been everywhere. We certainly haven't been nowhere. Baby. <laughs> well, with 198 points over the last two years, a record number of goals, two titles, a treble, a snaking parade through Manchester, the adulation echoed, the champagne flowed for Manchester City like the football. But after that almighty festival of football, Manchester City had expunged every single ounce of effort and maybe have had a bit of a hangover. And Liverpool, well, they've decided to give them a real headache. 14 points behind the leaders, third in the league going into this game. They've dropped more points this season than in the whole of the last campaign. And after tonight, they would have played a game more. They need to win. They need to keep winning. But tonight, it's Wolverhampton Wanderers, who have found the antidote to the after-effects of the Europa League. They've lost just three matches all season and already have beaten City. Pep knows he will have to be on guard, otherwise he'll be scrambling for the Alka-Seltzer again in the morning. Here are the two teams, Wolverhampton Wanderers unchanged for their game against Norwich. Patricio, their goalkeeper, Dendonka, Cody and Saiz, the back three. Doherty and Johnny on the flanks with Nevers and Matinho in the centre. Traore and Jota supporting Jimenez in attack. Manchester City, Edison in goal. Walker, Otamendi, Fernandinho and Mendy. Rodri is back. De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva in there too. Mares and Sterling supporting Aguero, who's back for the first time in a month in attack. Jesus not available because of illness. Away to our right, Wolves go into a huddle in those old gold jerseys, black shorts and black socks. It's the home kit for Manchester City tonight. They'll be shooting from left to right towards the Sir Jack Hayward stand. Away to our right. The last of the ten games of Christmas on TalkSport. This time last night, Liverpool had swagger, style and grace. Now Manchester City must keep winning to stay in the title race. Live and exclusive to National Radio. Your home of festive football fun. It's Wolves against Manchester City. And it's live. And it is only on TalkSport. Martin Atkinson glances over to the TV floor manager on the near side. And the fourth official... Andre Mariner blows his whistle and we're off and underway at Molyneux on a cool evening with Manchester City the champions shooting from left to right and immediately on the front foot with Riyad Mahrez, Bernardo Silva and then on the far side Raheem Sterling into the box trying to weave his way past Neves dispossessed by Matt Doherty and the ball is out towards the far side where it just plops off first Benjamin Mendy and then all the way back to Fernandinho before City see possession again and it goes back towards the right hand side nil nil the score Stuart Pearce is alongside me in the commentary box Wolverhampton Wanderers can claim fifth place with a win but Manchester City know that they can go second if they get all three points Stuart yeah as I say Wolverhampton certainly uh, slow starters to the season but have picked up and to run a Europa League campaign alongside the, the Premier League campaign isn't easy for a lesser than the top six club, I don't think. But they've certainly done that. Well, Wolves beat City at the Etihad despite only having 24% of the ball and only two shots on target. Adama Traore played wing-back for large parts of that day. His role has evolved over the course of the season. He will be a real threat. I can confirm he's the only Wolverhampton Wanderers player that has got his shirt tucked into his shorts over on the far side. The ball is with Doherty and then Giammatinho and Neves try and work it out towards the far side. Dispossessed by Sterling. Manchester City come forward now with Riyad Mahrez wearing gloves tonight. Jinx in from the right side. Clips the ball out towards the far touch line and stretching for it but not reaching it with Raheem Sterling. And the ball drifts behind and away for a goal kick away to our right. We've played just over 1 minute and 40 seconds. You're listening to Talk Sport. It's Wolverhampton Wanderers nil, Manchester City nil. I think... If you're playing Manchester City at the moment, the two players on fire are uh, Mares, who we saw on the ball there, and the person supplying him the ball was De Bruyne. You're going to have to get to grips with that access on the right-hand side of their attack. That's key to me. If you give them space, you'll get beaten in any game. Well, City are likely to come out of the traps quickly anyway. They've scored more goals than anybody else in the opening 15 minutes of Premier League 
matches. Here is Doherty, far side the right, hooked on by the Mexican Jimenez, and it's helped out over on the far touchline by Benjamin Mendy. There's a sliver in the uh, stand opposite, in the front tier of the stand opposite of Manchester City supporters that stretches from one corner flag to the other. It means that there is always a great atmosphere, but the away fans are given that much space over on the far side, and they just hug the perimeter of the pitch opposite us we're looking at a really aggressive high line here from Manchester City aren't we yeah. Wolves had the ball and they're squeezing squeezing right up to the halfway line exactly and they're leaving space if Traore can get his run right uh, on one side and Jota the other just to dip along the line and then dip behind they could have some joy tonight Walker has the ball on the halfway line he guides it back to Nicholas Otamendi Otamendi strides into the centre circle before playing it left and finding Fernandinho who's making his uh, 20th appearance of the season all of them have been at centre-back this campaign again he moves the ball forward into midfield looking for Sterling he's rushed by Neves the ball breaks for Bernardo Silva he's playing a little bit deeper again today onto Rodri who just travels towards the halfway line works it wide for Walker infield it goes to De Bruyne and across comes Saiz very quickly snaffles the ball away prods it out on the near side Otamendi can't get his clearance right under pressure from Jota and it's out for a throw into Wolverhampton Wanderers 0-0 I'm going to ask you a question are you surprised when teams don't play Manchester City at this moment in time they don't man-to-man -man mark De Bruyne because I, you know I think the best two in their team at the moment are Mahrez and De Bruyne without De Bruyne you can't get the ball to Mahrez well, I am surprised about that, and I think that Leicester almost tried to do that on Saturday night by having an extra man in midfield. However, I, I think he's so elusive, he drifts off people so well, and plays in an area which no one really wants to travel in. We, you look, he's playing on the right-hand side of midfield, really, in this team tonight. But actually, what he does is he drifts up into an almost sort of eight and a half nearly ten position doesn't he he does as i say he, he asks questions of you no doubt about that he wanders into areas that certainly as a left back i know that for sure you think should i mark him or stay with mares maybe three central defenders might help wolverhampton wanderers in that regard tonight because again he's just drifting across now towards the far side the left as Manchester City have possession, far side with Sterling, trying to hook it on towards De Bruyne. It's away by uh, Den Donker and up towards the halfway line. Jimenez wins a header in between Bernardo Silva and Rodri, but City have it back again. Five minutes played on Talk Sport, live at Molyneux tonight. Ball slid forward up towards De Bruyne. Looks for a little flick around the corner for Aguero. Interception come from Saiz, up to the halfway line it goes. Terrific atmosphere once again here at uh, the home of Wolves and they have possession deep inside their own territory and uh, a big long raking ball forward looking for Adama Traore intercepted by Fernandinho the second ball is won by Jimenez back out to Adama Traore again right angle of the Manchester City penalty area he tries to go on the outside of Mendy beats him then slips at the vital moment as he gets to the byline and attempts to pull the cross through the six yard area it goes behind and it's away for a goal kick but that's a little warning that for Manchester City it was a warning and it all come from a back to front ball that Fernandinho was stretching on and the best team in the league at stretching you and playing straight balls over the top of you are Liverpool and they're so effective but they always have two players looking to dart in behind and chase lost causes and I'm surprised that more teams don't adopt that, that sort of uh, attitude a little bit. Walker tries to play the ball in field. Jota stops it, blocks it. A defensive block by Jota. England could have done with a few more defensive blocks today. A batting collapse gave South Africa the upper hand in the first test. 15 wickets fell today on an entertaining day in Centurion Live over on TalkSport 2. Fallon Sherrock's uh, challenge at the PDC World Darts Championship ended in the third round defeat by world number 22 Chris Doby as well. And both over on TalkSport 2 today. But you're here listening to Wolves against Manchester City. Live on TalkSport with Mares trying to slalom towards the edge of the area. The Brunner gets there ahead of Cody, but Cody recovers and manages just to nudge the ball towards the near touchline. Takes a deflection off the Algerian Mares and goes out of play on this near side and away for a throw to the home team, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Still nil-nil. The way Wolves are lined up, Traore playing wide on the right-hand side. If I was him, when Wolves are getting attacked, I'd come back just to that half position that you're talking that uh, 
De Bruyne picks up for the counter attack and I think that could cause problems for City. Uh, here is Jimenez dropping deep and sending the ball long and forward towards Doherty. Doherty over the halfway line, prods it into the path of Adama Traore, he's stayed up and now he's running past Sterling, he knocks him to the floor, referee says no foul, Adama Traore turns around to the assistant on the far side, Konstantin Hatsadakis, who shakes his head, says no foul, and Mendy is charging forward at the other end, wins a header, ahead of Dendonka, there might have been a clash of heads between the two, the ball spills into the left wing position, the game has been stopped by Martin Atkinson, and uh, there will be an uncontested drop ball as a result of this, but at the other end, Raheem Sterling was accused of a foul, should he have been punished? Well, let's be fair, it was like Precious McKenzie going back a few years, Sags knows what I'm talking a about, few. who was a power <laughs> lifter against John Inman, weren't it? And John Inman <laughs> in Raheem Sterling put him to the ground, it was incredible. John Inman was definitely not a power lifter. No. He was uh, an actor. You get the point that I'm trying to make a little bit there, you know. Uh, Traore went down a little bit soft, did not convince the referee in any way, shape or form. Anyway, um, have you had enough nourishment today? I've I've eaten well. I, it's fair to say we've. Are, just are you being served at the moment? <laughs> I like your work. Like, see, it's nice the tie-in that we have. There's a there's a mince pie here. Yes, I've uh, I've bought a few. You, you bought a box, you. didn't you? I bought a box. box in for the team. But then again, I am that type of team player. In fact, the first thing that someone noticed on the Instagram post earlier was the mince pies. And if you're wondering why we're talking about mince pies and, and uh, nicking a few sweets here and there, I saw you went out for the jelly babies as well, by the way. It's because treatment is still being given over on the far side and there's a pause in play here. We have had no play for the last minute and a half while we're waiting for the uh, outcome of uh, Mendy and... Leander Dendonka's treatment, uh, Mendy's still getting some, he's standing on his feet, Dendonka hasn't got to his feet yet. No, while we're talking about Dendonka a couple of years ago when I was working at West Ham, I went over to Anderlecht, wasn't it? He was, uh, he was at yes. before he came here and uh, he was being offered a round and we had a look at him and sadly for me, I never saw, to, saw him playing midfield but I only saw him playing at the back as a central defender and where he's playing this evening and you, you were telling me he's played a few games there so far this season yeah. I wasn't convinced about him I've got to say his defensive work as a central defender about 15 games in a row now he's played as part of a back three was he playing in a two when you went to see him in uh, Belgium? I think it was uh, off memory a three actually but yeah he was a little bit unconvincing you know he's still young though isn't he I mean even he now he certainly is yeah he's 24 years of age he's been around in the Premier League for a couple of years now um, he's still, he's gingerly, only gingerly getting to his feet here. Don't think he's particularly satisfied. If we take one of those mince pies, that might liven him up. Where did you get these from, by the way? They're, they're, they're top quality, these. Thank you, yeah. A, a chain of, uh, <laughs> a large chain supermarket. Can't remember which one it was. It, does, it doesn't, say, doesn't say finest on it, though. <laughs> well, that goes without <laughs> saying anything I carry around is finest. Oh, we're back underway. Uh, Dendonka is over on the far side. He's now being rushed back onto the pitch. And the Wolves are coming forward. Jota trying to go round the goalkeeper. Lifts it over the top of Edison who comes out and clatters in. He was going through. It's going to be at least a yellow card. It's a red card for Edison. Inside the first 12 minutes of Molyneux. Quickly the ball was lifted over the top of the defence. And running through was Jota. Edison came out. According to Martin Atkinson, that is denying a goal-scoring opportunity. VAR will check it. But as far as the official on-field is concerned, Edison is off. Well, it was that ball again. The ball over the top. The straight ball over the top. And we're looking at the replay again. And I'll tell you what, it was a glancing blow. I think he goes on to score there personally, whether you call that dangerous and violent play. Well, the definition of denying a goal-scoring opportunity has to be that the next act will result in a shot on goal, which is likely to go in. I think that criteria there is acceptable. Yeah. As a result of that, it looks as if, unless VAR overturns it... Now, Martin Atkinson was involved in an incident here in an FA Cup game last season where he sent off Victor Lindelof and the VAR reversed it. So, I wonder whether or not that is a possibility. I think from what I've seen, I don't think so. We've had no confirmation here that VAR 
is going to overturn it. Now it must have been communicated to Edison because he's now stomping off, taking off his gloves, unfastening the straps and getting his fingers out. He's only been out on the field of play for 11 minutes. He's going to be replaced by Claudio Bravo. Either that or Carl Walker's going to go in again as he did against Atalanta. Rush goalie potentially. Just going back to the point we were making earlier, Liverpool pass masters again over the top, long range passing, all Wolves done there, dip a shoulder and spin him behind and that was enough to take Otamendi out of the game and draw a foul and a red card from Manchester City. So he's gone down the touchline and they're going to have to make a change here. I think it's going to be Sergio Aguero who is going to come off. Wow. Well, Aguero only just back from injury. His return has lasted less than 15 minutes because he is being withdrawn. He is being sacrificed for the goalkeeper, Claudio Bravo, who is about to come on for Pep Guardiola's team. It's his first Premier League appearance since the game against Liverpool where he had to replace Edison, who was injured. Now he comes on. One Premier League appearance since May 2018. It was that 3-1 defeat. He has conceded 24 goals from his last 45 shots on target in this competition. Listen to the Wolves fans now. Well, they'll be sniffing three points, that is for sure. They've got a free kick in a very, very good area on the pitch. And I'm going to throw it out here. If you think the league's not away from you and you've got a chance of winning the Premier League, you're down to 10 men at Wolverhampton, would you take the most likely person to score a goal off the pitch? Personally? That's why you're not a manager. You cannot wait that long to answer questions, fella. <laughs> Well, the answer is I wouldn't, but then again, he is Pep Guardiola. I think he knows probably a little bit more than me. <laughs> yeah, d does this that substitution indicate to us that he thinks the Premier League's beyond him? Which prior is what you to this thought game, for a while, by we, the way. I, from, yeah, that, that was gone a long time back, and he's concentrating on making sure that his players and his key player in Aguero will be fit for the up-and-coming games in the cup competitions. Well, here's Jean Martinho to step up, take this free kick towards uh, Claudio Bravo, who does make a save, a shot on target, grabs it and manages to clear. Wearing pink and back into the fray for the first time since that Liverpool match. The free kick up over the wall and straight down his throat. An easy catch to give him a bit of a test. Well, well, well. Manchester City warming up Eric Garcia as well here. I wonder if there might be another problem. Otamendi, is he OK? Just did a little hop, skip and a jump there as he put the ball straight out of play over on the far side. They can ill afford an injury now, Manchester City. Down to 10 men inside the first 15 minutes away at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Ascending off for their goalkeeper, Edison, after bringing down Diego Jota. And you, you've got to say, Sags talked in depth about the heart of the Manchester City defence. That was a very basic... Here they go again, same ball down that left channel. Otamendi comes across and then Walker has to help out as Johnny prepares to go through and chase. This time Bravo comes and collects. Yeah, it was a straightforward drive down the uh, pitch straight over the top of the Man City uh, back line that has drawn the uh, red card and on that occasion it, it, it caused panic once again. You said right at the beginning of the game about the high line that Manchester City were employing. Do you think that that was a contributory factor to the issue that they had for the sending off? I think, A, it's a contributory factor without a doubt, but secondly, I think the fella who stood just outside his technical area down there, Nuno, has looked at Manchester City, as all coaches do, and say, where can we hurt them? And their scouts would have looked at it, and everyone looks and say, the problem is, Leicester exposed it on times, didn't they? Even though they got beat, but United. Vardy running that channel, United, Chelsea. that's the ball. It hurts teams this day and age. And I just wonder whether or not, as we get back underway here down the right-hand side with uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers just popping the ball around deep inside their own territory, whether or not after that incident has happened, whether Manchester City should have just dropped 10 yards off a little bit. But they're still up on the halfway line here. Yeah, they certainly are. It's OK being up on the halfway line now, but when Wolves get a clear opportunity to play a decent pass, get their head up, you've got to drop. 
Here is Neves then, moving up towards the halfway line, shuffling right to Doherty. Doherty comes back in field. Neves then tries to spray the ball out towards the near touch line. It's a bit behind Johnny, who retreats, comes back to halfway. It's watched by Mares and then plays it in field. City down to 10 men here. And 0-0 is the score. Edison sent off for a foul on Jota. Here is Dendonka. Picked up by uh, Neves, spread down the right. Adama Traore takes on Mendy, gets to the byline, tries to produce a cross. It deflects off Mendy, then back off Traore. The Spaniard gives away the goal kick. Yeah, I, I think it's OK being having a high line if the opposition have got their head down, can't see a pass. But on a couple of occasions already, Wolves have worked it where a midfield player or a central defender have got their head up, can see the pass. At that stage, you've got to drop slightly. You're listening to Talk Sport. This is the final one of the 10 games of Christmas. We've already had something to talk about, and Bravo almost gave us something more because he was being closed by Jimenez and then struggled to clear, and now Wolves have got it back inside Manchester City territory. 0-0 the score. Here is Moutinho to Neves. Neves on towards the right. Doherty joining the attack now. He moves towards the right side of the area, further wide is Adama Traore, takes on Mendy, gets to the byline, produced a cross which is deflected out and it's away for the first corner of the game. Traore's had the ball on three occasions now taking Mendy on, every time it's touch, touch, push on the outside right foot, he's going to have to start dipping inside on the odd occasion because I think Mendy's worked that out. Here's the corner then, Giamatinho to take it and uh, he's going to place the ball down in the quadrant. Cody staying back inside uh, the centre circle just in case. There's a break by Manchester City. Neves is lurking on the edge of the D. There are six old gold shirts to aim at inside the penalty area, including Jimenez and Dendonka. It's in towards Jimenez at the near post. A little glance towards the far post. Kept in by Doherty and gobbled up by Bravo underneath his crossbar. It would have been a tight angle from which to score, but certainly kept the ball in play. De Bruyne tries to get it forward quickly for Manchester City and quickly up the pitch they go Walker now takes over and runs at Johnny he moves infield plays it on to Rodri Rodri strokes it across the ground to Mendy but Mendy didn't realise that Jimenez was coming from behind bit of pressure from Jimenez back to Mendy again from Bernardo Silva over on the far touchline 20 minutes played you're listening to TalkSport Sam Matterbase and Stuart Pearce in the commentary box tonight at Molyneux on a misty cold night and certainly the clouds over the head of Pep Guardiola. He saw a victory for Liverpool, an imperious victory for Liverpool last night in our commentary. And now his team are down to 10 men in the first 15 minutes. The ball is out wide with Sterling. Cutting in field now and looking to try and get it on his right foot. Stopped by Neves. Rodrigo sends it back down the left into Mares. Beats two players. Goes down. Looks for a penalty. Jumps into the air. And then Martin Atkinson is surrounded by four light blue jerseys. They want a penalty. He's shaking his head. VAR will obviously look at it. And Mares saying, you'll see in a minute. Just wait. He thought there was contact. Was there enough to give a penalty? I think he's trod on the outside of his right foot from what I'm seeing there. And that was Dendonka. There was a bit of grappling going on from Dendonka. Well, I think there was a, a bit of contact there. There was certainly enough contact, similar, in fact, to the one down at the... Uh, Vitality Stadium where David Silva wasn't given a penalty for Manchester City earlier in the season Dendonka steps on the outside of his right foot and they are checking a penalty now with VAR for a possible foul by Leander Dendonka and remember they're down to 10 men Manchester City but they could have a penalty here I think it's one of those if he'd have given a penalty on the pitch he'd have stuck with a penalty he hasn't so he won't is it enough to send Mares jumping into the air with his heels coming up towards his buttocks well to be fair it, it can be a little bit painful when someone treads especially the boots as they are at the moment they're paper thin well they're still waiting there's a lot of different angles being shown to the VAR uh, back in Stockley Park and Martin Atkinson is having a word with David Coote who is the man in charge back in West London uh, his hand is to his ear Connor Cody is standing over he's just thrown his head backwards I think they think there's going to be a penalty here it certainly looks as if that could be the case still well, ongoing conversations going on with Martin Atkinson it's been nearly two and a half minutes now that we've been listening and waiting for Martin Atkinson to get the word well there was grappling and also um, studs on the top of the foot wouldn't surprise me either way this one went really wouldn't 
Well, the fact that they've been waiting so long obviously means that they're looking at something. They're, they're, they've noticed something, and we think it's the contact on the ball. Uh, he's still waiting to change his mind, and now points to the penalty spot. It is going to be a penalty. Martin Atkinson, after the consultation of the video assistant referee in Stockley Park, has given a penalty to Manchester City. And Leander Dendonka is shaking his head. And despite being down to 10 men, Manchester City have got a chance to take the lead. They have, and it's Sterling from the penalty spot. I'm not sure that uh, Raheem's a recognised penalty taker, is he? No. Not too often. Sergio Aguero. Ilkay Gundogan, they're the usual penalty takers with Aguero off, it will be Sterling who takes it, he runs up, right footed, goalkeeper goes the right way, makes the save for Cristio, who saved from Paul Pogba earlier in the season, has saved from Raheem Sterling, it's still 0-0, and an evening which started badly for Pep Guardiola has just got even worse. Well, good decision eventually I think by VAR, could have gone either way that one. Goalkeeper advancing off his line slightly, so whether they'll look at that, potentially I think they are, he's stepped forward, <laughs> oh, here we Lord. go again, but good save, hit it hard and low to the goalie's right. Hold on, they're not allowing him to take the corner, Kevin De Bruyne, they may well have to take the penalty again, there's possible encroachment here. Oh. He's changed his mind, they'll take the penalty again. <laughs> penalty retake because of encroachment. Well... If they're the laws of the game, they're the laws of the game. Pep Guardiola has decided on a change, I think. He, he sort of rolled his hands, told them to change the penalty taker. Raheem Sterling's gone to pick it up again. He shook his head, Pep Guardiola, and went back and sat down again. I don't think he thinks that Raheem Sterling should be taking this penalty kick. He well, is going to, you know. And Martin Atkinson is trying to make sure that they stand outside the penalty area here as Raheem Sterling prepares to take this penalty kick. He steps up this time, right footed, it's saved again, comes back to Sterling. But this time he slots the rebound home. And it is 1-0 to Manchester City. Now the Wolverhampton Wanderers fans are suggesting that possibly he encroached. There was a encroachment by a Manchester City member of staff. Martin Atkinson once again is surrounded by Manchester City and Wolverhampton Wanderers players. But Raheem Sterling is tucked in the rebound from the retaken penalty to make it Wolverhampton Wanderers nil, Manchester City 1. Well, exactly the same penalty, same side, not as in the corner as the first one. But Patricio just parried it back into Sterling. Well, the penalty was given for a foul by Leander Dendonka. And then the penalty from Riyad Mahrez was taken. And there's all sorts going off over on the far side. Was something thrown onto the playing surface yeah, from it? behind the goal away to our right, right hand side? The VAR check to check a possible encroachment by a Manchester City player has been completed. And now that is over. So. The game will go on, Manchester City do lead, but there will be an investigation about something that was thrown from the crowd away to our right-hand side. Yeah, I think there was two or three things thrown, and the one that I've just seen the referee hand to the fourth official was a silver hip flask. Well, it's Maybe certainly... Maybe a Christmas present. It's certainly... I uh, <laughs> hope Andre Mariner doesn't have a swig. Um... It certainly revved up the atmosphere here, a sending off at one end, a penalty retaken at the other after it was initially missed. Missed once again from Raheem Sterling before he tucks in the rebound. I mean, talk about drama. And you thought only EastEnders and Coronation Street gave you this sort of entertainment at Christmas time. I think anyone who thought at nil-nil down to ten men Manchester City this was going to be a comfortable game for Wolves was a little bit deluded. Because even with 10 men, City can uh, can hurt you. Great finish from Raheem Sterling. 
after it came back to him very calmly slotted it home despite being rushed from all sides but two missed penalties back to back no wonder Pep was shaking his head when he turned round and went to take the second one that's why I said to you Sam I'm surprised that it Raheem's up because never seen him um, as a, as a recognised penalty taker credit to him for wanting to step up but I'm thinking Carl Walker uh, is slightly better Mares, there's certain individuals De Bruyne of, in the ranks that might be a little bit better suited he did score the winning penalty in a league cup final shootout against Chelsea yeah. last season but I can't remember him taking too many apart from that here is uh, Jota in midfield the man who drew the sending off from Edison but it's Manchester City who have gone on and taken the lead here by a goal to nil 28 minutes played you're listening to Talk Sport on a dramatic evening and it's Manchester City the champions of England who lead by a goal to nil despite being down to 10 men here is uh, Connor Cody forward towards the right picked up by Neves and then sent further out towards the right hand side and the Dharma Traore Traore flicks it on into the path of uh, Doherty it's cut away by Mendy and taken towards the halfway line Jimenez comes in and tries to nab it back off Rodri it's back from Fernandinho to Bravo a very calm pass into the feet of Rodri and City look to build again from the back they don't want to invite too much pressure now and of course the difference is and you mentioned this a little bit earlier with City grabbing the lead here it means they don't have to overcommit. therefore leave those spaces for Wolves to counter-attack into exactly it's, it's changed the whole dynamic of the game in many ways you know City will try and run the clock down with their possession work and keep men behind the ball Rodri once again keeping the, the uh, ball ticking over in midfield Pep I think was incredibly proud of the way that Manchester City played on Saturday night against Leicester City as Sterling comes forward and with a rather uh, ambitious effort from the edge of the penalty area kicks it straight over the top of the crossbar um, uh, they had a real presence about them Manchester City in that game numerous reports of the throwing of foreign objects there is an announcement from the PA system for the Manchester City supporters that there are numerous reports of foreign objects being thrown onto the playing surface and they have been warned by the public address system to stop doing that I think there was a message for the Wolves fans after that as well um, but uh, certainly there has been action taken by the authorities after that hip blast and one or two other items were thrown onto the field of play but we've got to say as well well done to Patricio saving two penalties yeah you know credit to him I mean that sort of half got overlooked in all the melee afterwards here is Martinio over on the far side Manchester City now the dust has settled on those two big events are leading by a goal to nil but Wolverhampton Wanderers have the ball and a man advantage in this game Giammatinho takes it forward, clips it up towards the edge of the 18-yard box that they're attacking away to our left. It's headed down by Walker into the arms of the goalkeeper Claudio Bravo, who was the substitute once uh, Edison had been sent off. Still, Eric Garcia warms up on the near touchline. Still, we play on here. Adama Traore over on the far side. You mentioned that Wolves have been slow starters in the game. I don't know whether the sending off has actually affected them more than it's affected Manchester City, you know. Haven't seen much of the ball since they've gone behind here. 1-0 to Manchester City. Here is Neves tucking it wide to Adama Traore. He's bustling right up to the halfway line. Sends it wide into Jimenez. Jimenez tries to turn. Under pressure from Fernandinho. Guides it back into the path of Matt Doherty. And then it's all the way back to Dendonka who gave away that penalty which was retaken eventually saved and then the rebound converted by Raheem Sterling it's 1-0 to Manchester City yeah. as I say I was not overly impressed with Dendonka as a central defender when I saw him and to be fair to him he settled into the English league really well I think you know 24 years of age, a Belgian international. The Belgian boss, Roberto Martinez, is here tonight to keep an eye on him and one or two others, I think, as well. Maybe Kevin De Bruyne ahead of the European Championships in the summer. Here's Neves. 
working the ball wide to Adama Traore, a yard in from the touchline, he starts to step forward towards the edge of the box, he goes on the outside of Bernardo Silva, tries to get the crossing, succeeds but it's too close to Fanio Bravo, who pulls it into his chest, bowls it out to the far side and it's cleared away, Mendy, he bursts forward towards the halfway line, they'll need a lot from him now, he's the only Manchester City player actually, as he goes over the halfway line, inside Wolverhampton Wanderers territory, and it comes back very quickly towards the halfway line. Poor pass by Saiz, too much for Diego Jota, and it goes out of play on this near touchline. I tell you what Wolverhampton can't do now, they can't get in a routine because they've got a man superiority in pass, pass, pass. They've got to understand that the sending off has come, for, and their two best chances have come from balls over the top, and movement over the top, so they've got to keep doing that and mixing their game up. This is game day exclusive on TalkSport, oh that's a bit of a miscontrol from Claudio Bravo under pressure from Jimenez and he's kicked it out to the far side, poor clearance, pressing from the front again, Wolverhampton Wanderers and uh, Bravo got a little bit befuddled didn't he? Well, he's certainly no Edison that is for sure with the ball at his feet. Uh, Jimenez wants a foul over on the far side, Fernandinho was the closest Manchester City player to him, referee says no foul play on, it's an intense atmosphere inside Molyneux tonight. Game day, exclusive on TalkSport with Nile TV, don't forget you can watch Chelsea away at Arsenal this Sunday and Liverpool versus Wolves live with Now TV, Sky Sports Day Pass for a one-off payment of just 9 99 that's this Sunday. And remember on Saturday we've got four games on game day on Talk Sport, starting at the uh, Amex Stadium with Brighton against Bournemouth, finishing with uh, two games at once at 5.30. On TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Here's Johnny down the left-hand side for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Trying to get back into the game. They trail by a goal to nil. But do have a man advantage. Jota takes the ball to the corner flag. A low ball in towards the near post. It's blocked by Walker and goes out of play and away for a throw. Well, we had festive Christmas cheer before the game. But that's all diminished now with yeah. both teams, really. It's all a bit of humbug now, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah. Neves takes it on. Switches the play from out towards the right-hand side. Is it a Gavin and Stacey family feud that we've got going on here? <laughs> uh, here is Rodri, down the left of the centre circle, out to Mendy, back in field to Silva, now on to Rodri again. Manchester City just trying to keep hold of the ball as much as possible, there's no need for them to force the game. They lead by a goal to nil. Defensively, they haven't been particularly good, they conceded 20 goals already. This time last year, 13, the year before that, it was 12. Not that Pep Guardiola will like you pointing it out too much. Here is uh, Riyad Mahrez from a long ball down the middle. Through the legs by De Bruyne of uh, Neves. Got nutmeg by the Belgian there. On to Bernardo Silva, back into Rodri and then back to Kevin De Bruyne once again. Sterling wants to try and play through the middle and over the top. He's playing more centrally now in the absence of Aguero, Raheem Sterling, who missed two penalties but managed to score the re bound of the retaken second spot kick as De Bruyne goes down under a challenge of uh, Ruben Neves and the free kick is given on the cusp of the centre circle to Manchester City who lead by goal to nil yeah agricultural challenge there putting De Bruyne to the ground City will be pleased they need a, a spell of possession take the sting out of Wolverhampton be important the Wolves from certainly when the balls are in and around Bravo squeeze on Mendy onto Sterling down the left offside flag is up yeah squeeze onto that back line almost go man for man and force City to kick it there is no height at all in the uh, in the City front line here is uh, Moutinho bringing the ball out for Wolverhampton Wanderers who so far this season have had a pretty good record 27 points which is the most they've ever had at this stage of a campaign even better than last year Doherty out to the right and Adama Traore back into uh, Dendonka Nuno Espirito Santo just sort of encouraging Adama Traore just to move further down the right hand side uh, trying to push his team on as Johnny tries to get in behind on the left hand side across comes Otamendi hooks it clear uh, Jota tries to keep it in uh, Johnny has gone down under what was a challenge from Otamendi and now has crumpled in the corner maybe got a little whack on the head I think and he's going to need some treatment and the game is going to be stopped 
Yeah, I think it's vital, Sam, that, that Wolves don't get into that habit of pass, pass, pass without actually yeah. going anywhere because they've got a lot of room uh, and a superiority at the uh, upper end of the pitch. Obviously, it looks like a little elbow by Otamendi in the neck of Johnny, which has caused him an issue. Obviously, Manchester City are a very good team. They're great in possession. They're good at keeping hold of the ball. Sometimes when they lose a man or when your opposition loses a man, can it be more difficult for you because the onus is on you to go out and play? And, of course, when they came into the game, that wasn't necessarily the Wolves' game plan. 100%. As I say, Wolves would have been delighted. I said to you, the longer this game goes at nil-nil or Wolves one up, then City have got to keep coming on to them. At this moment in time, they've got the extra number of Wolves. They're probably overpassing across the back line and whatever and not looking forward and threatening in behind. I think they've got to do both, mix their game up a little bit. A little bit of encouragement for Wolverhampton Wanderers and we've spoken so often about the defensive issues that Manchester City have had. Last year, they conceded twice or more in four games across the entire season. They've done that six times already this campaign. And of course, now Wolves need to score twice in order to win this game. They travel by a goal to nil, courtesy of a Raheem Sterling goal inside the first half an hour, despite Manchester City being down to 10 men for the first 15 minutes. It's an uncontested drop ball on the halfway line here after the game was stopped for Johnny to receive treatment. He's back on the field of play now. Wolves had the ball inside their own half. Seven minutes before half time. Here is Connor Cody up towards the halfway line, then infield to... Uh, Jota, Jota back to João Moutinho, Moutinho out towards the far side of the right, collected by Dendonka, square ball back to João Moutinho, space to run into, plays it left to Johnny, lots of Manchester City bodies behind the ball apart from Raheem Sterling who is the lone forward now, Dendonka into Neves, closed down by Rodri, back in field it goes, now collected once more by Dendonka and then on to Saiz, Saiz out wide, on the left is Jimenez, dropping deep to pick up the ball, clipping it into the central area, looking for Hotter. as Jota tries to get on the end of it, but across comes Rodri to stop him from bringing it down. Goes out of play on this near side, and it's out and away for a throw, deep inside Manchester City territory for Wolverhampton Wanderers, who trail. See, every time that ball's gone in and around the back line or over the top, there is a certain air of panic, I think, with the City players. They can deal with it on the floor in front of them, but spin them and turn them round, different matter. And De Bruyne trying to get out of a tight knot of old gold jerseys. This time he doesn't escape and Wolves have got it back again. And they come forward down the right with Doherty wearing bright blue boots illuminated under the floodlights here at Molyneux tonight. Out wide it goes to Moutinho. João Moutinho steps forward and was a teammate of his manager at uh, Sporting. Won the cup twice with him as his goalkeeper. Jota down the left playing the ball into the central area. It takes a couple of deflections and then it's uh, pushed away by De Bruyne. De Bruyne now tries to get in between two old gold jerseys. Giamatinho does well to fight back and win the ball. Four walls, they've turned it over. And now here's Neves, on to Doherty. Doherty wants to drive towards the area here. He moves up towards the edge of the box, needs a bit of support, produces a cross. Otamendi doesn't deal with it at all well. Into the area it goes. Oh, there was a handball inside the penalty area. Might have been Jimenez though. Comes back towards Jota, back to the edge of the area. Johnny with a cross into the box stooping to head it clear was Otamendi now it comes back out and there's still Wolves pressure Moutinho looks to size up an opportunity plays it left into Johnny who's got lots of room to get a cross in here three waiting in the centre it's scooped towards the far post here's Traore with an effort it's blocked by Mendy comes back out to him once again and now Traore still trying to cause trouble tries to turn back in field gets to the apex of the penalty area shuffles it back now here's Dendonka back to Saiz looking to change the angle of attack here Wolverhampton Wanderers but a sustained pressure right at the end of the first half it's on to the left once again and Johnny Johnny faces up Riyad Mahrez Mahrez with a tackle but Johnny's still got it back to the edge of the box now Moutinho then wider to Saiz can he produce across the Moroccan left footed an arcing one deep towards Jimenez good pressure from Fernandinho hooked away by Mendy but only to the edge of the penalty area Neves and Sterling fighting for it it's a bit of a mismatch and it's won by the Portuguese it's picked up now by the Moroccan once again Saiz infield to Neves Neves drips it back out to the right looking for Adama Traore he's battling with Bernardo Silva a battle that he's always going to win now he goes on the outside gets to the byline produces a cross John Johnny Otto is underneath it, so is Jota, Jimenez in there, Otamendi fighting for it, manages to push it away, and there it is, hoof to the halfway line, and Wolves reset and start again. Yeah, 
it's all played in City's half at the moment. City pen back in. They can't get a foothold in the game. Wolves getting it out wide and tossing it in the box and it's causing mayhem. City down to 10 men. Edison sent off inside the first 15 minutes. Here is Doherty. Infield to Jimenez. Poor flick which is intercepted by De Bruyne and up through the middle it goes towards Sterling who has to retreat because there's no one in front of him and eventually gives it to Rodri out wide it goes to Bernardo Silva Mendy joining the attack De Bruyne's made a run in between the lines here they didn't spot him still Mendy takes it on he's shuffled outside by Den Donker it goes out for a Wolverhampton Wanderers throw in front of the Manchester City supporters well what a breathtaking first half we have had here at Molyneux Edison sent off for a foul on Jota when he looked like he was going clean through there was a safety announcement after things were thrown onto the pitch after Raheem Sterling had been uh, had uh, missed the penalty and then had to retake it had it saved again and then put uh, poked in the rebound we had a huge VAR delay prior to that for the penalty kick and uh, now there's a discussion going on as Johnny sends the ball into the centre of the penalty area grabbed by Claudio Bravo the substitute goalkeeper discussion going on between the Wolves bench and the fourth official after a steward came down from the crown and went to have a word with Andre Mariner I think we've got seven minutes of overtime running into uh, obviously with all the stoppages we just had mm. quite a few significant ones as well um, hasn't changed the intensity or the real fight in the game a hand went up from Mares there and that's going to be a free kick to Wolves they want to take it quickly De Bruyne stood in the way he's asking for a bit of distance Martin Atkinson is going to have to try and calm proceedings down here very spicy inside Molyneux tonight 90 seconds remaining of normal time at the end of the first half Manchester City lead by a goal to nil Raheem Sterling with the rebound from a retaken penalty but Wolverhampton Wanderers have had a lot of the ball in the last five minutes or so and they're coming forward again Jao Moutinho clipping it down the left for Jimenez who holds on to it well the Mexican then tries to arc it towards the far post it's stopped by Claudio Bravo good save he packs it down takes a couple of steps forward but that was a half decent effort from the Mexican yeah it was decent they, they sat off him by a couple of yards he tried to get the curl on it into the far corner for a horrible moment I thought it was going to float over Bravo but no well, Claudio Bravo has had his problems uh, but he is going to have to face Everton with Edison who is going to be suspended for that game the last time he played against Everton he conceded four goals from four shots on target you're listening to game day exclusive on talk sport Nissan commercial vehicles built to deliver deliver here is Adama Traore up towards the halfway line. Left it goes. On to Martinho. Now on to Johnny, who progresses down the touchline. Just makes an angle to come in, Phil. Mares comes across. Now it's with Adama Traore again, who does it brilliantly to curl the ball out to the right side. Doherty was waiting for it. Back to Neves. Edge of the area. Right footed cross. Deep towards Jimenez. Kills it with one touch. Pulls it back into the six yard box. Blocked though by uh, Carl Walker. Martinho. Then in field it goes. Seven minutes of added time as was reported by Stuart Pearce. Jimenez down the left. Space for Johnny. Cross into the box. Steered away by Rodri. Picks up by Mares, who's doing his best to try and get it clear. But they're under real pressure here. Out of play and away for a throw halfway between the edge of the penalty area and the byline. Back it goes into Saiz. And now on to Johnny once more. Back to Saiz, who sends it infield to Neves. Neves, who can strike from this sort of distance, does strike from this sort of distance. No power or movement in that, though. And it bounces once before it goes through to Bravo and City survive. Yeah, Wolves have got to try and keep this tempo up. Keep City pegged back on the back foot, defending in and around their last third. And when it comes in, look for seconds, oh. get on the end of things. Bravo's kick goes straight to Neves, he can't control it though, and Rodri gets it back to Otamendi. Here is uh, Carl Walker clipping the ball down the right-hand side, it's over the head of Saiz, and now back with Connor Cody. Wolverhampton Waters, do they need three central defenders now? Well, I was just thinking exactly the same myself, maybe at half-time, he'll wait till then, have a little look at the shape of his team and decide whether he needs to uh, to just fluctuate the uh, almost uh, rubber-like 
Adama Traore just sort of bounces off people, doesn't he? Keeps going and bundling down the right touchline. Got away from two City players, played it down into the path of Jimenez. It comes off Bernardo Silva and goes out for a throw-in. City aren't happy about that award. And it might have actually have given handball against Bernardo Silva. Not sure they actually did touch his hand. Uh, but a free kick has been given in a dangerous position. And I think that uh, Pep Guardiola will be furious if Wolverhampton Wanderers end up scoring from this. Yeah, there wasn't a great deal in it. I mean, obviously, we're further away from it, and the screenshot was uh, was one of those that wasn't convincing. Here is the free kick, then, to be taken on the right side by set-piece specialist Xiao Moutinho. We're into added time at the end of the first 45 minutes here on Talk Sport. Wolverhampton Wanderers nil, Manchester City 1. Martinho from a wide right free kick position, a one-man wall into the near post, picked away by De Bruyne, comes out to the edge of the area, and it's with Diego Jota who's going to recycle it here, steers it towards the far post, and Saiz was stretching for it, but it wasn't a great ball. It goes behind and away for a goal kick. Yeah, a bit of a shame that. As I say, it was the right ball. He's just put too much on it. And I think if it was on the money, they'd have been isolated a touch there. Now look at Pep Guardiola and uh, Rodolfo Burrell coming out towards the edge of the uh, technical area. Again, he's trying to move pieces around like they're on a chessboard. Uh, Eric Garcia still warming up down in front of us, away to our left. He's been warming up for about half an hour. Yeah, I think Pe Pep's probably got something on his mind for half-time, substitution-wise. Well, he's already had to make one, of course. Aguero came off. Here is uh, from the goal kick which Bravo has taken. Martinho quickly out towards the right and Doherty who gets forward quickly. Traore helps it on. Neves scoops it forward. It runs down the left. Here's Johnny picking the ball up left side. Infield to Jota. Now Neves again. Three waiting for the delivery. He tried the little reverse pass into Jota but it was read by Mares who cut it out. Found Sterling and now Raheem Sterling tries to bring it away from deep inside his own half. Goes back to Otamendi. Back to Bravo. Bravo says... I'm a goalkeeper, get me out of here. Smacks it long up over the halfway line. It drops inside the Wolves half and Wolves have got it back again. A little swipe by Sterling. Free kick. Saiz. And Wolves have it once again. Cody up to halfway. Manchester City got to keep their discipline. They can't afford to lose another one. No, they certainly can't. Traore bustling forward. Plays a 1-2. Gets to the edge of the area. Tries a swipe and miss kicks it. Well, that was a fantastic run from Traore, who played the ball towards the right to Jimenez, got the ball back off the Mexican. I thought he was second favourite, but somehow he got to the ball that he was three yards behind. Otamendi so much closer to it, he got there well ahead of the Argentine, swiped his left foot at the ball, but couldn't connect properly. Yeah, I, I think that's probably where Traore is at the moment. Chota trying to run forward at Otamendi once again, who this time stands in his way. The ball spills into midfield. De Bruyne brings it forward. It's behind Sterling, and Wolves have got it back again. What do you mean by that? I think he's took the wrong option. I think to take a touch there might draw a penalty. Here is uh, Johnny trying to flick it into Adama Traore. Still a little bit raw, still a little bit naive, the 23-year-old Spaniard. He gets fouled by everyone, gets loads of people booked. He's already scored twice against City this season but he does have his moments he switched off towards the end of the Tottenham game which allowed Vertonghen to score the goal which won the game for Jose Mourinho's team here they've got to get back into the match Wolverhampton Wanderers they've still got a lot of time to do that we're in the fifth minute of seven added at the end of the first half it's 1-0 to Manchester City Mendy inside his area tries to clear but he doesn't even get it up to the halfway line Neves sends it back out to the right it goes the Irishman Doherty takes over wearing gloves tonight on a cool night in the black country he cuts in field but he's stopped by Rod Rodri who steps in his path and it's cleared by Sterling uh, a foul by Jean Martinho on Sterling who which he apologises for straight away and a free kick for Manchester City who lead by that Raheem Sterling goal to nil well I think Manchester City are finding out what it's like to play against Manchester City now they've just been penned in haven't they in their last 30 metres and, and just can't get out well it's tough this isn't it for Pep Guardiola who is uh, just uh, having a word with his assistants he's got uh, new assistants now hasn't he Manuel Estiate and Rodolfo Burrell who uh, are alongside him in the technical area away to our left hand side in the absence of Mikel Arteta who's now with Arsenal who played Chelsea on Sunday in his first home game we'll keep you in touch with that as Sags takes you round the grounds in the AFL Championship and beyond 
Sags is going to Nottingham Forest this weekend. They'll give you a warm welcome there, fella. Have you got I'll pass word on, don't worry. Have you got anything you can take back to the club shop for, for Piercy? Uh, He's got half a wardrobe full of stuff from that place. <laughs> he can drop one of these Ronnie Corbett jumpers <laughs> off, maybe, you know? <laughs> <Were> he? <laughs> uh, ball is out of play on the near side. It's uh, Manchester City throw as we reach the final few seconds of the first half. A, a first half which has been hotly contested. Um... A first half which has been full of drama, a sending off after 11 minutes for Edison. A lot of animosity between the two sets of supporters. A penalty which was given after a long VAR delay. Then, after it was saved by Patricio and Wolves cleared it, it was retaken because of encroachment. Saved again, and then the rebound put in by Raheem Sterling, at which point something was thrown onto the field of play. And then, an announcement was made about the safety of the players. Again, the referee now is being marshaled by... Uh, three stewards who are coming onto the field of players. Booze greet the officials at half time here. They're not happy with uh, Raheem Sterling. They're not happy with the officials and VAR. Look, it's supposed to be the season to be jolly, but Pep, who was proud as punch after the game on Saturday when they beat Leicester, will be delighted that his team, down to 10 men, have come out like this and dealt with the situation up until now. They lead by goal to nil at the break, but it could be a long second half at half time it's Wolverhampton Wanderers nil Manchester City won well because they've got 10 men they're going to have to earn their crust aren't they Manchester City I like your work but they uh, are going to do it with uh, a slightly altered formation here uh, off has come Riyad Mahrez at half time and on has come Eric Garcia who played five minutes against Burnley recently and made his Premier League debut off the bench in the 8-0 victory over Watford earlier in the season. We are off and underway at the start of the second half. And uh, that is going to mean that Manchester City are going to drop into a back five. five yeah. With three central defenders, Otamendi, Eric Garcia in the middle and Fernandinho to his left. The wing-backs being Walker and Mendy. And then three in midfield, Bernardo Silva, Rodri and... Kevin De Bruyne and then the lone striker is Raheem Sterling they leave by goal to nil Manchester City who is shooting from right to left in the second half in those light blue jerseys white shorts and white socks Wolverhampton Wanderers with Patricio in goal who's managed to save two penalties and got nothing for it uh, in fr he's behind a uh, back three of Dendonka Cody and Saiz the wing backs Doherty and uh, Johnny in midfield Martinho and Neves and then Traore and Jota supporting Jimenez here is Traore cutting in from the right hand side in that old gold jersey with black shorts and black socks and another poor ball out from Sterling goes straight out of play and that gets the ironic cheers from the Wolverhampton Wanderers supporters away to our right why has he decided to go to a back three you asked me the question at halftime what I think would happen if he did bring him on and I thought Fernandinho would go into midfield yeah uh, I think what he's done he's just decided that here's Jimenez into the centre looking for Jota Jota away pokes it over the top of the goal He's only five yards out when he gets the return from Jimenez, but he couldn't steer it home. It was a difficult ball to control, actually. Dropping from the sky late. Goalkeeper was coming out. I don't think Bravo actually made himself that big. The ball dropped over the top of Fernandinho's head here. And uh, Jota made a late run into the box. Got there ahead of Mendy. Uh, but I don't think Bravo was convinced that Jota can finish, could finish from that sort of angle. And he was right. I tell you what, that was poor, poor defending. A little one-two and a scoop up the top. Took three players out and he sh I think he should have done a lot better than that. As I say, he's caught the ball on the up and, and carried on the momentum of the ball and it's gone over the roof. But as you were saying earlier, why has he gone to a five instead of putting Fernandinho and Rodri in midfield as a two and two with two holders? I think he realised on the back of the first half, we ain't getting out anyway. So I'm just going to fill the box up when the ball comes in. So he's just going to plug the gaps and just try and keep it as it is, keep a clean sheet, uh, take three points and go home. I think so. I mean, City haven't threatened hardly at all, have they? Let's be honest with you, since uh, they've since gone the down to ten, yeah. Yeah, since, since the penalty. The only real incident they had was that break into the box by Mares. Then Donker will be kicking himself if they don't get something from this game. Wolverhampton Wanderers, who come down the right with uh, Adama Traore, whose uh, legs are incredibly thickly set aren't they he's got very powerful he's got powerful everything but his thighs in particular are incredibly powerful and strong 
and he's just running back into position on this right hand side uh, ball being played around by Manchester City in the centre circle out to Raheem Sterling over on the far touchline a couple of steps in from it in those bright orange boots he's in a tussle with Jota wins the tussle glides forward looks for De Bruyne and then comes across uh, into the centre where Rodri engages City have got it back popping it around nicely in midfield and keeping possession 1-0 they lead three and a half minutes into the second half here on TalkSport thank you very much wherever you are for joining us if you're in your car on your way back from somewhere visiting relatives possibly today did you end up speaking to Granny after excluding her from Christmas Day? <laughs> Listen, don't read too much into the Granny story. It was a bit of a red herring. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was. It was a Christmas ruse. It was. Oh. <laughs> here is... <laughs> Never, this is disappointing. Uh, here is Denton Donker. And visions of uh, Grandma Pierce sitting on her own, waiting for you to come and pick her up for three days. Here's Fernandinho out to the left. Bernardo Silva back in field to Eric Garcia uh, that sounded like I took pleasure in that I didn't here's De Bruyne on to Raheem Sterling oh he's breaking the lines now and he's racing away down the left hand side goalkeeper comes out Raheem Sterling scoops it over the top of him and Manchester City have raced away at the start of the second half to score a second goal and it's a second goal for Raheem Sterling the subject of the boo boys after converting a retaken penalty on the rebound in the first half. He's raced away and scored a more conventional goal in the second. On the counter-attack, Manchester City have struck and it's 2-0 despite being down to 10 men. Fantastic run and a fantastic ball in behind there. City played well, played through the thirds. Good possession football and when it came in, I think it was De Bruyne who eventually got in the space. It was then Donker who's been flat footed and to be fair when you go to Belgium a couple of times and watch him play at centre off I don't often get it wrong but great run by Sterling well he got drawn in there didn't he he did and he lost the sight of Sterling on his shoulder and Sterling took full advantage of that little bit of space he was afforded raced away at rapid speed into the green grass in behind the Wolves defence and it's 2-0 to Manchester City I think as well, I'm a little bit disappointed with Patricio there. I think he's sort of gone down to one knee and almost made it easy, made Sterling's mind up for him. What you've got to do as a goalkeeper or any player on the pitch, put a seed of doubt in the opponent's mind. Uh, here's Jota at the other end, trying to squeeze the ball into a congested penalty area. Johnny joins the attack, goes down. He was pushed by Rodri. Referee says no penalty. The Wolves fans not happy about it. And City are looking to escape. Neves stops them from doing so, turns the ball over, back it comes down the left with Jota, running towards the edge of the penalty area, it's now on to Moutinho, just outside the box, in the centre is Neves, and Sterling goes to ground, it's clipped back over the top, towards the left hand side, Walker nudges Jota, a coming together says Martin Atkinson, Nuno Espirito Santo raises his palms to the sky, Pep Guardiola is on the pitch, a yard inside the touchline, the referee is consulting with VAR, but has said, hold on a second, he wants to have it checked. And that's exactly what's happening. For me, I, I think he's just planted his feet personally, and there's been two incidents there, all within seconds of each other, where players have gone down so, so cheaply. Okay, so they'll check the possible penalty on Rodri on Johnny, first of all. I think they'll clear that, no penalty. I don't think they were checking decision the no other decision, which was the Jota coming together with Carl Walker. I don't even think the VAR looks at that one. Sam, I'll tell you something now. I'd have booked both players for diving on the back of what I've just seen. VAR, VAR checks, checks are complete. Here come Wolves again. They've won the ball back after City momentarily cleared. And remember, 69% of all their goals have come in the second half. Here's Jimenez shooting from the edge of the 18-yard box and curling it wide. He thinks he took a deflection. Can't believe a corner kick has not been given. The Wolves bench are up and out of their technical area. They're screaming at Andre Mariner. Four of them inside the technical area and Andre Mariner is telling them to go and sit down. Martin Atkinson is unmoved. It's a goal kick. Yeah, there was a definite deflection there. Fernandinho. Oh, it's a big one. Got a good block on the ball. But this is where I think the players have got to help the referee. We've got VAR in the game to help the referee. Any chance of players helping the referee a touch? Eight minutes gone in the second half. 
And it's uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers nil. Manchester City 2. Two goals from Raheem Sterling. Goals number 19 and 20 for Raheem Sterling this season. You know, and you go back maybe a year, two years, three years ago before Pep Guardiola really got his hands on Raheem Sterling. One-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper bearing down on goal, you wouldn't be confident, would you? I don't think there was much doubt in our minds that he was going to finish that one off. No, they weren't. The run was that good. He had plenty of time to think about it. And uh, as I said before, Patricio, I think he could have done better. You've got to stand up and and feign and, and put a seed of doubt in, in Sterling's mind. And I don't think he ever done that. Here is Saiz over on the far side for Wolverhampton Wanderers in those gold shirts with black shorts. And Manchester City have done incredibly well to flex their muscles in this game and score two goals despite being down to ten men. And they scored both of them after Edison was sent off. They've given the ball away cheaply here. Neves has given it to a Darmatri who shot from 25 yards out along the floor it's kissed the inside of the post and gone in and Molyneux has gone mad because it's now Wolverhampton Wanderers 1 Manchester City 2 it's a third goal this season for Adama Traore against Manchester City yeah Raheem Sterling gives the ball away around the centre spot and as soon as he done that I looked at Pep Guardiola and his hands on his head he knew the counter was on and I've got to say, Traore drove and smashed it into the far corner. Oh, what a finish it was from Adama Traore. He might not be the finished article, but he's certainly getting better and better and better as the season goes on. That's his fifth goal of the season. And it's a massive goal. He scored twice against City at the Etihad. He scored here to keep this game alive. And we've got a cracker on our hands now. We certainly have. I think this has got 3-2 Wolverhampton written on it at the moment. Wow. Here's Neves. Down the right looking for Jimenez. Across comes Mendy and shuffles out and gets the ball out of play. Nuno Espirito Santo wants things moving quickly once more as Matinho plays it left. It's taken on by Saiz. Forward and up to Johnny. 2-1 the score in Manchester City's favour. Live on TalkSport with Sam Matterface and Stuart Pearce. However you're listening to us, thank you for joining us. Remember, we've got the TalkSport app where you can listen to TalkSport and TalkSport 2 and switch between the two very easily by switching almost as easily as Manchester City switch defence into attack. Oh, poor free kick taken by João Martinho, given straight to Walker and defence is now being turned into attack very quickly by Manchester City. De Bruyne trying to get away. Cody intercepts and Wolverhampton Wanderers have the ball again. It's going to be fierce, it's going to be fast, it's going to be non-stop action from now until the end of this game with Wolverhampton Wanderers chasing it. They trail by two goals to one. But uh, I mentioned just before that goal went in, 69% of their goals come in the second half of matches. They score a lot of them even later than that. Most of them in the last half an hour. Good tackle by Saiz over on the far side. One by Johnny who moves the ball in field. And the command and control centre of Neves and Matinho take over in the centre of the Wolverhampton Wanderers half. They move it up over the halfway line, flick forward by Neves, looking for Jota in between two City players. Needed a bit of backup there, Johnny was slow to arrive, he's got there now, moves into the area, his cross is deep, it's towards Jimenez, not a great header, chested down by Fernandinho. Jota is there to put him under pressure, ball scooped into the air, Bravo jumps and claims, and City have got it back. Yeah, Nuno was telling his team just to calm down the uh, tempo of the game. I think that his team have got to do exactly the opposite. Keep the revs high, keep the crowd at it, and keep Manchester City penned in. And keep shooting on sight, without a doubt. As I say, first shot on target, or second at Bravo. Well, his first shot on target was from the free kick that when he came straight onto the field. Yeah. He certainly hasn't had to make a proper save prior to the goal going beyond him. It was a good hit from Traore. Hit the inside of the post and nestled into the corner of the net. There's a foul by Otamendi on Jimenez as he tries to jink here from the left touchline. And the blood is up amongst the Wolverhampton Wanderers pack. The noise reverberating around Molyneux. The sky shaking. They know that they are in the ascendancy here tonight. Their foot is on the accelerator. And they've got a hell of a lot of time to play against 10 men. 58 on the clock. Jean Martinio to take the free kick. What would you do with this one? Um, 
I think it's too far to shoot. You might be shaping it into the far corner, bouncing front of the goalkeeper with players going across the line of the ball. It's on the far left. It'll be whipped in right-footed by João Martinho. There are six old gold jerseys to aim at. They go towards the ball. It goes towards the six-yard area. They flick it into the air. It comes off a City head first, though, and it's grabbed by Claudio Bravo. That bright pink goalkeeping jersey certainly easily visible away to our right-hand side on a misty night in Wolverhampton. Just needed a slightly better delivery than that, didn't he, Jean Martinho? Yeah, too much loft on it, I think. You know, he needed to a bit lower trajectory with a bit more violence on the ball. Fernandinho tries to clear, takes a couple of deflections, runs through to Saiz. Now it's on to Martinho. Martinho stops, waits, just drags it forward to Traore, who gets dispossessed, gives the ball away. Rodri comes forward now. Good work by Neves to win it back. And now Martinho. You know, Espirito Santo cannot stand still neither can Pep Guardiola ball out wide towards the left oh Jota was fouled there referee says play on oh no they're going to pull it back Castro's running to the area Johnny is running to the area with the ball in his feet but the referee blew the whistle fouled to play the advantage and has booked Otamendi as a result yeah almost feel sorry for the referee on that occasion I've got to say Otamendi's come out and absolutely cleared him out and that could have been close to a red to be honest with you and the referees reacted straight away it's the third time within what probably five minutes Otamendi's cleared somebody out so he's had to react to it and lo and behold the ball goes straight to a Wolves player and he should have played advantage who would be a referee? <laughs> well neither of us so we're too busy sitting up here oh it is a very incredibly difficult job I can't imagine that it's any easier uh, uh, with uh, a lot of bloodlust doing the rounds inside a stadium like this I'm sure he was enjoying his Christmas before he come here tonight <laughs> oh that's not a bad one on paper Wolves Man City good footballing match my goodness me uh, Martinho has another chance to put in a free kick from a similar area than the last he hits it right footed it's a little bit deeper this time headed away by Otamendi first time Johnny tries to win it back does it's given to Martinho by Neves Martinho moves towards the edge of the area overplays the ball too heavy goes out of play and it was aimed for Jimenez who had moved into a left wing position but didn't reach him it goes out for a goal kick away to our right all the action by the way taking place in the Manchester City half of the field it's just smothered in old gold it is, as I say... It's like Sags, smothered in old gold. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's like John McCreary next to me. He's got all his rings on and everything. Look at him. God bless him. 61 minutes gone in the game. A brilliant game here on TalkSport. I mean, what a fantastic festive period we've had so far. Hasn't stopped, by the way. We're still right in the very middle of it. If you look at what's happening over the weekend, we've got so much coming up for you. Saturday's game day, as always, across the TalkSport network. We've got four exclusive commentaries from the Premier League. Brighton, Bournemouth, Watford, Aston Villa on two, Norwich, Tottenham, and West Ham versus Leicester. All live on TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Here's Jimenez, down the left-hand side, trying to get in behind Otamendi, who goes across into the right full-back position and manages to clear and you can hear more coverage of England's Tour of South Africa from the team tomorrow 7.30 Talk Sport 2 I think if you can you keep trying to get the ball in and around Otamendi and force him into challenges being on a yellow at the moment here is Adama Traore down the right for uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers taking on Mendy and Bernardo Silva who's got back to double up on him the cross is still a really good one Jimenez brings it down tries to get the shot away blocked by Walker comes out to Johnny Johnny can't control it away by Walker again it comes straight to Dendonka and then two players go towards Neves he turns and takes them out of the game and now it's on to Traore down the right he goes stops the ball tries to flick it into the area blocked by Bernardo Silva he'll get a second bite here Adama Traore he just loves running at people and looking and darting in between them and threatening to take them on and bamboozling, bamboozling them with his menace that he's got attacking from this right-hand side. Johnny, back down the left. Jota with a low cross. Blocked again, this time by Garcia. Out in the way for a throw to Wolves. Well, I think Manchester City are doing the season's defending in one game at the moment. <laughs> They've been penciled in. I don't think their full-backs have ever been run out that much. The ball keeps coming out to Traore. Mendy's got to deal with him. Here's Dendonka from distance and Claudio Bravo drops to his right. It was a good 30 yards from goal but he got well behind that Dendonka and Bravo had to drop to his right and stop it from sneaking in. Yeah, I think there's a touch of movement down there on City's bench. 
I think it's Gundogan. He's getting warmed up. Yeah, well, silky Ilky, he, as his nickname is, he's going to come on and try and add a little bit more control, I think, to the game. It's difficult, though. When you're down to 10 men, you've got a team as good as Wolverhampton Wanderers are to really do anything about the situation, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's tough. They pinned uh, City in. You, you can't do a great deal. The fella at the back isn't Edison anymore, you know, so his distribution isn't as good. And you just can't get out your half. 63 minutes gone, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1, Manchester City 2, if you're just joining us. Edison was sent off after 11 minutes for a challenge on Diego Jota. Then, very soon afterwards, Raheem Sterling missed the penalty, or had a penalty saved by uh, Rui Patricio. Then was ordered to take it again because of encroachment by Wolverhampton Wanderers players. He then had that penalty saved. It came back out into the area and he tucked the rebound home. That was 1-0. Four minutes into the second half after City had made another substitution. They had to take Aguero off for Bravo to come on uh, and gone to three at the back. They scored again on the break, but then Adama Traore reduced the arrears and he's coming forward again. Down the right-hand side for Wolves as we restart play. Into the box it goes, headed away by Otamendi. Back out as far as uh, Neves, but De Bruyne gets ahead of him. Glances out to Mendy and then Rodri recycles the ball back to Benjamin Mendy on this left-hand side. Always clattered by Adama Traore. Up to Sterling it goes. Bernardo Silva back to Sterling. Back out to the left now and De Bruyne trying to get there. Then Donker comes across and covers and then turns and plays the ball back in field rather elegantly into Ruben Neves. 2-1 to Manchester City on Talk Sport. Here's Johnny. He's overrun that one and Walker is going to take advantage. He's going to power away here. Walker bursts into the Wolverhampton Wanderers half. He's level with the edge of the area. Back in field it goes to Rodri and now on to Bernardo Silva once more. Turns it back to halfway where it's collected by Otamendi and Manchester City for the first time really since they scored their second goal have a bit of possession inside the Wolverhampton Wanderers half. Gundogan about to come on for Pep Guardiola's team. I think De Bruyne will be coming off. What do you reckon? I'm really... Honestly, I couldn't call it at the moment. I really couldn't. Walker. Back to Garcia. Garcia very quickly shuffles it back to his goalkeeper, Bravo, who clips it out towards this near side. It's a bit of panic in the air whenever the ball goes back to him. Rather unfairly. De Bruyne, halfway. Up to Sterling, who's isolated, but holds on to the ball well and turns it out to the near side. Mendy, further on to the left. Now it's on to De Bruyne once again. A little trick to take it away from Dendonka. Then he drags his shot wide. But he made space there to get the shot in on goal. And actually, if he'd got it on target, it could have caused trouble. Well, he probably should have done. Yeah, I think you're right. De Bruyne is the one heading over. Here he is, Kevin De Bruyne. And that's the final change for Pep Guardiola. Yeah, maybe he thinks, listen, it's an out-and-out battle to stay in this game. And maybe he thinks... I don't need uh, eroding the physicality from De Bruyne when I'm going to need him going forward. 31,737 have uh, turned up at Molyneux to enjoy what has been one of the most entertaining games of the season so far. And we had a great game yesterday on Talk Sport Leicester against Liverpool. We, uh, we, in fact, we had nine great games on TalkSport yesterday across the network. You and I were at Tottenham earlier in the day, weren't yes. we? Yes. Yeah, I think you've got the better game in the evening, my friend. Had a good old ride on the back of my motorcycle as well. It's cracking. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a great Christmas, me. Uh, here is uh, Doherty down the right side. And then you bought me mince pies. Uh, here is Saiz, 40 yards from goal, striking across the floor, but through a dangerous area, I mean, hoping, I think, for a deflection. It didn't get one. It went straight behind for a goal kick, away to our right-hand side. Have you been naughty this Christmas? In what respect, my friend? Have you had some treats? Oh, on the sweetie and cake front, it's been ludicrous, Has by it? the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I must admit, I've overindulged. Yeah. January is going to be fun. Um... Certainly this game has been fun. 68 minutes on the clock. Bravo clears from the goal kick position. Up high over the halfway line. Header away by 
Saisu sends it on into Jota's path. Garcia tussling with Jota. And you can see why they brought on Garcia. He's got a little bit more pace about him, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, there were too many gaps in and around, well, certainly down the side of Otamendi, you know, and uh, Wolves are exp exploiting that. And uh, the longer the game goes on, the more they'll need to put bodies in holes, really, uh, in and around their back, back third. Johnny has the ball for Wolves on the halfway line. I think they're going to make a change now as well. Is that Neto who's going to come on? Uh, out to the right and Doherty, Doherty to Traore, Traore with his back to goal, 15 yards back from the edge of the area on the right side as Wolves look at it, back to the halfway line, helped on by Neves, Saiz and then out to Martinho who's three or four yards in from the touchline, a central ball finding Ruben Neves now, helps it on towards the right, now it's picked up by Traore, again a bounding run facing up two defenders, cuts in field, left footed drive and it goes through a clutch of players and it's saved down low by Claudio Bravo. Now that, that's better from Traore, I was criticising him in the first half for continually going on the outside, I don't know whether they've had a word with him and said look, mix your game up, he's come inside now and uh, he looks a threat, because Mendy doesn't know whether to go inside or outside with him, you can't prejudge him, we're just thinking, in my playing days, myself against Traore, that would have been an ugly affair for 90 <laughs> minutes, honestly. <laughs> He would be a handful to deal with, that who, is for sure. Who would have won? I think he would have. He'd have, he'd have put me in his back pocket. Look at the size of him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a toothpick compared to him. <laughs> Crikey. He is, uh, is muscle-bound, isn't he? He's, uh, he? he's built like a 100-stroke, 200-metre runner, isn't he? Very dynamic. Yeah. Off the mark, an incredible acceleration. Oh. He's certainly made an impact on this game. He's made an impact on the Premier League this season. Oh, Benegre, I think, is going to come on. Not Neto. Benegre, the left wing back. I wonder if it'll be a like-for-like -like change with Johnny. Gets through a lot of work over on that far side, Johnny. And they do usually switch the two out. Manchester City have been accused here of wasting time. Bravo took a long time over a a free kick and then it's gone out of play on the far side and they're taking time over the throw in now over on the far side thrown in eventually by Manchester City who lead by two goals to one then it's a mistake by Walker it goes out of play after being popped back to him by Gundogan and it's out and away for a throw in over on the far side here is Ruben Venegre who's going to come on and oh no they're not going to make the change yet didn't do it quick enough and Andre Mariner just checking the studs of the Portuguese as uh, Neves brings it up towards the halfway line. A long ball forward now, looking for the run of Jota. Cross comes Walker instead and clears away for Manchester City. Halfway line, Saiz bends down, nudges it forward with his forehead into Matinho, and now Neves has got it back again. Neves out to the right, Doherty. Doherty tries to spin in behind Mendy, but Neves goes centrally instead instead of playing the ball out wide to him. Matinho steps forward, sends it on towards the tall, slender figure of uh, Saiz, the Moroccan, and then it goes central to Jimenez, the Mexican striker, and here's Traore, brushes aside Bernardo Silva, lovely cross into the box, which may be just a little bit too heavy, eludes both Jota and Johnny, comes back via Martinho, edge of the area is Diego Jota now, faced up by Gundogan and Walker bit of space out wide for Johnny Johnny gets away from Walker despite a desperate lunge ball into the box is cleared by Otamendi it's out for it's not a corner it's bouncing away by the corner flag there's a bump there though by Walker it's going to be even better than a corner it's going to be like a sh hockey short corner in from the uh, corner flag and a dangerous area from which Wolves can create here's the change Johnny off Venegre on well, I'm, I'm just looking at the technique of Traore, you know, he's, he was faced up, well, Bernardo Silva faced him up there, and the look on Bernardo S Silva's face was, uh, why me, you know <laughs> what I mean, and he pushed it down, his technique is so good, isn't it, he can almost take crosses from behind him and pull them back round with pace and power. Free kick then, 
edge of the uh, well, left edge of the area down by the byline so it's, it's it's just in from the corner flag actually midway between the two and it's a, a real good position here there are players in old gold on the edge of the area who could be set back here but it's whipped in underneath the goalkeeper and flicked into the far post by him and there's over the top of the crossbar i think maybe saiz got the final touch on that actually and it's glided past the goal and city with a massive let off they certainly have but they probably overloaded the near post too much city and the ball eluded oh. four of their players and a little touch oh well the crowd went up they thought it was in the back of the net and so it's close. missed the far post so close it must have been a what six inches wide of the left hand upright yeah if that 2-1 to Manchester City, 73 minutes on the clock. You're listening to Talk Sport. Tomorrow, I'll be at Norwich versus uh, Tottenham Hotspur. You fancy coming with me? I'd love to. Oh, cracking. Oh, shall I get the mince pies tomorrow? Bring whatever you like, unless okay. you want to change. All right, OK. That was, uh, that, that was a bit sort of like uh, of a hint that maybe mince pies should be off the menu tomorrow. Something different. Yeah, and I was saying, for goodness sake, just bring something. <laughs> Neves, inside the centre circle, out to the right it goes, Adama Traore takes it on now, and uh, moves down the right, again, Bernardo Silva sort of comes out towards this near <laughs> touchline, tentatively, sort of thing, oh crikey, not again, uh, he'll be having nightmares about Traore, here's Neves, a little drag back to take it away from Rodri, lovely technique by him, strokes it out to the far side, 2-1 to Manchester City, 16 minutes left. Here on the far side is Venegre. Looks to get the cross in. Eventually does. It takes a deflection off Walker, goes out and away for a corner. The one thing City haven't got, apart from Sterling in the front four, is anyone to run away from any of the Wolves players. Sterling can do it, but certainly the other three cannot run and dribble past any of the Wolves players. So if I was Wolves, I'd probably be more inclined to just squeeze on that little bit more and take the risk. 15 minutes to go and here is the corner from the far side Matinho guiding it back to Neves Neves encouraged to shoot gives it to Traore instead he does thunder the ball forward and then just heads it as it deflects off Fernandinho comes back to Doherty loops it into the box Jimenez heads it down but it's Bernardo Silva who gets there first it's a poor clearance by him Rodri terrible effort at trying to get it clear and it comes back via Matinho to the left and Jota down the side of the penalty area crossed it in blocked by Eric Garcia and then eventually cleared away by Gundogan but it's coming back again folks here come Wolves once more 15 minutes to go 2-1 to City 10 men of Manchester City that is Martinho trying to help it on to the left more space for Venegre good work by Martinho to get it out to him he tries to get to the byline Sterling trying to shepherd him out towards the corner flag brings him down free kick well I'm not sure why he's done that he's done brilliant Raheem Sterling to get back goal side get defending and he's just put his hands on Vanegre and just well he's just leant back into him and gone down again not much in it no there wasn't a great deal in it but because you've got your hand on his shoulder you give the referee an opportunity to do it right corner kick uh, not a corner kick a free kick again right by the corner flag which Martinho is going to take over on the far side a crowded near post area once more Doherty at the back post then Donka looking as if he's going to make a run towards that near post three waiting for the delivery in the centre Martinho right on the money guided to the back post oh. over the top of the crossbar by Doherty right at the far post under pressure from Rodri might have been a flag up anyway but it was another really good delivery into the near post by Martinho, arcing forward. It took a flick off of Garcia, I think, and then Doherty coming in at the far stick. Almost got enough on it. Well, a great defensive play at the far post there. I think it was Rodri. Rodri just flicked it. He flicked it into the face of Doherty, didn't he? Which he meant did. Doherty's header was sort of mistimed and went over the crossbar rather than underneath it. This is TalkSport, and we're live at Molyneux on what has been a uh, ferocious game of football here. Uh, with Manchester City taking the lead, despite being down to 10 men, then taking a further lead just after half-time, after changing their formation slightly, and then Wolves dragging themselves back into the match through Adama Traore. They're defending at the moment, a rare piece of, piece of defending for Venegre. Not the best of clearances, and Rodri's got it back. Here's Bernardo Silva, out wide to Ilkay Gundogan. 
and uh, Manchester City have it on the halfway line. And what are you thinking about Wolverhampton Wanderers and the way they're lining up here, Stuart? Well, at the moment, City have got possession of the ball and they've pushed more players forward than they have done for since they've had players sent off. Wolves need to just leave one or two up and wait for the counter-attack almost. You were looking in particular at Doherty here, weren't you? Uh, Traore is, is the one. Needs All to right. go off and off. And I'm saying Mendy's gone forward. Look, oh, now Traore. He's... Slalom's past exactly. Bernardo Silva on the halfway line. He's got Doherty outside him and Jimenez too. Those two get confused between one or two. The two... And the communication was poor there. It went in between the Mexican and the Irishman and ended up going out off Mendy for a throw-in on the near side. But Traore there leading another great counter-attack. That was the best opportunity Wolves had because they've ended up dropping off. City got excited. Mendy's decided to go on the overlap. And all of a sudden, they lose possession. And it's a three-on-three -three scenario, which should never happen when you're down to ten men and winning the game. So Diego Jota is now coming off. And on comes Neto, Pedro Neto. Another young player here at Wolverhampton Wanderers who uh, was signed in the summer, only 19 years of age. Portugal under 21 international. And uh, he goes uh, onto the pitch to replace Jota out on that left hand side. You're listening to Talk Sport. We're live at the uh, home of Wolverhampton Wanderers. And here is St Sterling, who scored both Manchester City goals in the game, trying to take advantage of uh, Dendonka being a little bit physical. Uh, he's got to be a bit careful here, Dendonka. Sterling's got away by hooking the ball to Bernardo Silva. He goes into the box. He's robbed by a really good tackle by Ruben Neves. And here come Wolves once again. Down the left they go. Neto speeding forward, accelerating into the Manchester City half. He goes on the outside of Walker. Low cross into the centre. Hooks away by Otamendi. Out for a corner. And they're under the cosh again. Yeah, they certainly are. A good break once again. They drew City onto them. But what they've got to do... They didn't leave, you've got to leave probably at least two and a half players up the pitch. You cannot afford to get all back because you won't get up the pitch to get on the end of things. As of the 78th minute, Manchester City had 39% possession, which is the lowest Guardiola has ever had in any league game at any of his clubs, including Barcelona, going right the way back. That just shows you the way this game has gone and how out of character it is for Manchester City to have to defend a lead like this well it is I mean their players wouldn't have played well that they haven't as you said statistically played in a game like this quite incredible and listen you can't help thinking if Wolves get one they'll get another straight after as well you know 10 minutes to go before the conclusion of this match and it is Manchester City who lead away from home by two goals to one again the old trick, wasting a few seconds. Bravo looks to come and take the free kick, but Walker just wants to get onto it. And he sends a long diagonal upfield, headed by Doherty back to his goalkeeper. And Wolves have got possession of the ball again away to our left-hand side. Remember, Wolves can go fifth with a victory. Remarkably, you do forget that it took them until the seventh game of the season to get a win this campaign. They had a sluggish start. But they've certainly got better as the campaign has gone on. City, who have won nine of their 11 games when scoring first. And have not been defeated when leading 1-0 at the break since January the 29th, last season, Newcastle United. Here on the left-hand side is Neto, into the box. A little cross which is flicked into the air by Walker. One by Mendy. Mendy under pressure from the Traore, who's robbed him inside the box. Sends it square, and it's poked home by him and but it's all about Traore. It is all about Traore. What a fantastic moment for Wolverhampton Wanderers. What a wonderful piece of persistence from Adama Traore. Mendy thought he'd done his job. Traore ensured he hadn't. Pinched it, squared it. Jimenez slid in, finished it. It's 2-2 with eight minutes to go. Well, if body language is anything to go by, the City players are absolutely flat out at the moment, you know. And uh, Wolves, they've got a wonderful opportunity to take three points. Now, Mendy, I'm not sure what he's attempting to do there. Really not. Shepard the ball out, which was never going. And Triori, credit to him. 
2 0 up, Manchester City, it's now 2 2. And he's been the one, hasn't he? Traore, an assist and a goal in this game. Well, we're thinking about this in the context of this game, but take a second to think about it in the context of the season. Manchester City, who we said before the game kicked off here, Stuart, needed to be flawless in order to give Liverpool any scare. Dropping another two points here? What, what does that mean? Well, listen, I, I think it's a done deal anyway. You know my thoughts on that. But Liverpool go away. They're saying the, the World Club Championship will, will be distraction for them. They've ended up coming back as world champions. And on the back of that, Leicester have lost the game. And another game where Liverpool get home, the chasing team, and Manchester City look as though they might be dropping points here. Listen, the noise inside Molyneux is deafening. Absolutely deafening. Raul Jimenez with the goal, his second in two games. But it was all about Traore. Dispossessing Mendy, who dithered. Traore didn't. And he didn't delay in getting that ball into the box, did he? And there was Jimenez, like a poacher, to poke it home. I don't know what City's uh, mentality will be now, whether they'll end up chasing the game or just taking a point if they can. Well, I mean, arguably, a point isn't any good to them, is it? No, no, not in the context of chasing Liverpool down, that is for sure. I, I mean, the overarching view might be that actually it is good because it takes them second in the league and ultimately that's going to be their aim at the moment maybe anyway Wolverhampton Wanderers are certainly going for all three points and uh, I think we mentioned it a little bit earlier on it's remarkable the number of goals they score late in games and they got Liverpool next and then Watford and Manchester United in the FA Cup Wolverhampton Wanderers next for Manchester City Sheffield United in 46 hours and 15 minutes time Everton on New Year's Day and then Port Vale in the cup before the first leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final against Manchester United. There's some tired players out there for City at the moment. Rodri just going across. Gundogan, who's only just come on, is going to have to do his running for him. Well, they've been down to ten men since the uh, 12th minute of the game. Just look at Rodri. Look, he is sold out, honestly. Looks like he's uh, pulling a tugboat, doesn't he? Yeah. Here is... Traore down the right hand side who looks like he could pull a fleet of tugboats <laughs> Dendonka forward to Saiz and then on to Neto is there going to be a winner here the only downside I don't think Wolves have got enough men in the box at this moment in time look I mean they've got almost five six players behind the ball I don't think they need that I've already beaten them once this season here's Neto inside the area trying to squeeze past Eric Garcia it breaks to the left and Venegre two waiting in the centre one of them is Jimenez Doherty is at the far post it's sent long by Gian Martinio and over the top it just squirms out and goes away for a goal kick away to our right hand side we've got four massive minutes here at the end of the game at Molyneux a game which started at a rapid pace, burst into life straight away, saw a sending off, penalty drama, VAR drama, two Raheem Sterling goals, some issues of disorder which had to be uh, spoken about over the public address system, and then a Wolverhampton Wanderers comeback inspired by Adama Traore. Here is Sterling, down the right, 2-2 the score going into the final four minutes. He wanted a free kick there, Sterling, he's not going to get it, and as a result of that, he's off the pitch and out of the game at the moment. He'll know Connor Cody from their Liverpool days. Out wide it goes, finding uh, Neves, play it to the halfway line, and now on to uh, Jimenez. Play it from Stuart Pearce was the call, well, he did that, didn't control it first time perfectly. Fernandinho was heavy with the challenge, but it is just a throw on this near side. Sorry, mate, I just got caught up in the game a little bit. excited there. Maybe <laughs> coach's hat on there. <laughs> Martinho taking it forward. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure and privilege to be here. 
Here is uh, Neves through the centre, looking for Traore. Doesn't reach him. Goes straight through to Claudio Bravo, away to our right-hand side. 2-2. Wolves have just lost an intensity to go and win the game. It's almost like we're back in it now. We've got a point. We'll take a point. I think there's a bit more for them if they want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with City and say, we're not going to take a point. Foul by Bernardo Silva gives a free kick to Wolves. No one in Europe's top five divisions have drawn more games than Wolverhampton Wanderers this season. Served them well so far. They will be delighted by picking up a point here. I think it would, would have been probably perceived as an unexpected point if they get that uh, today. If you look across the pitch now, look, Wolves have got six players back here to Raheem Sterling. You know, they positionally playing what like you're that. What saying is they don't need to have that many people back. They should permit more men forward and go for the victory. Exactly that. If, if they've got... I think it's a great opportunity to go and win a game here. Well, they started the day in eight. They will stay in eight if they don't win this game. They'll have 28 points from 19 games. It's a great return. But they will only be a point behind Tottenham Hotspur, who are in fifth position at present. Manchester City will move up into second if it stays like this. But I think everybody will walk away from this. I think taking the positives out of it, won't they? And Manchester City will think, well, hold on. We were down to 10 men for 80 minutes, but managed to get something out of the game. That will certainly be the line from Pep Guardiola when we hear from him on the sports bar with Adam Catterall after 10 o'clock tonight. And I suppose Nuno Espirito Santo will be saying, well, we come back from 2-0 down against the champions of England. Oh, without a doubt. Both teams and both managers will take the positives out of it. Without a doubt, they'll bemoan certain decisions by referees, I'm sure. But in the main, it's been some spectacle. Oh, it's been an absolute peach of a game wonderful to commentate on wonderful to watch and I think everybody all 31,000 of the people that have attended this match will remember it for a very long time here's Jimenez onto Doherty Doherty ghosting into the area left footed drive he's won it oh they remember it now alright oh they will remember it now a last minute winner from Matt Doherty against the champions from Wolverhampton Wanderers who have come back from 2-0 down to steal all three points against the 10 men of Manchester City and Pep is floored by Nuno Espirito Santo once again and now surely the title is going to Anfield well <laughs> they didn't have too many in advanced areas there but a wonderful little give and go and a drilled finish into the far corner Always had a feeling that if they got one, there's a winner to be had afterwards. And they're absolutely flat on their knees, Manchester City. They really are. They've given everything in the game. But we've had some great strikes in the game. We really have. Wow. Matt Doherty, ghosting past the diving, flailing Otamendi. Faces up Eric Garcia, who throws himself at the ball. But Doherty keeps his composure, jinks in on his left foot and drives the ball under Claudio Bravo. 89 minutes on the clock and Wolverhampton Wanderers 2-0 down five minutes into the second half. Lead by three goals to two. Four minutes of added time. Doherty with his fifth goal of the season. A composed finish by the right wing back may well have just settled not only this game, but the title race itself. Here come Manchester City. Walker down the right from Gundogan's pass into the area. Bernardo Silva, right footed, deflection corner, takes it wide. Yeah, this might be City's biggest and only chance of the game, potentially. Four minutes to go. And it's down to Wolverhampton now to play a possession-based game, defend a corner, possession-based game, and see four minutes out if you can. Here is the corner over on the far side, the Manchester City right. He arcs it towards the edge of the six-yard box. It drops on the edge of the area for Sterling. He's looking for a hat-trick. Adama Traore bundles Sterling over and gives away a free kick on the cusp of the D. Now this is interesting. The ball's fell to Sterling. I thought he was going to have a wild swing at it. He's done brilliantly. Took it on the off volley, drove across the front of the box and Traore's, well, he's muscled him out akin to the challenge in the first half once again, but the opposite way round this time. Pep again onto the pitch, being pulled back by Andre Mariner. This is game day exclusive on Talk Sport with Now TV. Don't forget you can watch Arsenal versus Chelsea and Liverpool versus Wolverhampton Wanderers live this Sunday with the Now TV Sky Sports Day Pass for a one-off payment of just 9.99. Free kick to be taken on the edge of the D. Manchester City 
with a chance to maybe rescue the game inside the last few seconds of this match. We're into added time. Four minutes have been allotted. I think Guardiola's just called Mendy over and told, sent a message on to let Gundogan take it, but Sterling's pulled rank, I think. Yeah. Well, they're not telling Gundogan if that's the case, are they? Well, he sort of shrugged when uh, Mendy mentioned to him, you go and take it. Well, Sterling is going to take this free kick. There is a four-man, well, there's a five-man Wolverhampton Wanderers wall. There is a four-man Manchester City wall, which has to be a metre in front of them, at least, just uh, in front of that. Sterling puffs out his chest, this looks at the ball, steps up, takes a little couple of pigeon steps, then hits it right-footed towards the near post, hits the crossbar and goes over. So very close to an equaliser from Raheem Sterling. Flipped it over the wall and it hit the top of the crossbar. And Molyneux is mightily relieved. Well, he's got it up and down really well, but it just didn't come down enough. And it's hit, clipped the top of the crossbar with a jumping wall. That would have been a fitting goal for a hat-trick. Wow. 3-2 the minutes. score to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Game day exclusive on TalkSport with Nissan Commercial Vehicles built to deliver. And our pundits deliver on TalkSport. Stuart Pearce said to me, midway through the second half, this has got 3-2 Wolverhampton Wanderers written all over it. And that's the scoreline. Uh, just the energy needed from City to keep wave after wave of attack. It just becomes too much for you eventually. Bennett's come on the pitch now, auxiliary central defender, and they won't be going anywhere. Yep, he's come on to replace Jimenez, who's got a, either a goal or an assist in eight of his last nine Premier League games. Some investment was put into him, but boy, has he delivered. He's been linked with a move to Everson, hasn't he? I think he will probably be hoping he'll be playing Champions League football with Wolverhampton Wanderers next season because they're about to go up to fifth in the Premier League if it stays like this. 3-2 Wolverhampton Wanderers lead. We've played four of the four added minutes at the end of the game. We're into the final few seconds as Neto comes forward. Down the right for Wolves who lead here after coming back from 2-0 down. Edison was sent off after 11 minutes and Manchester City have had to play with 10 for such a long time and they've put un been, up, been put under incredible pressure by Wolverhampton Wanderers who are desperate for the final whistle now. They're desperate for all three points. Imagine the roar when Martin Atkinson eventually lifts that whistle to his lips dejection on the far side for the Manchester City supporters there'll be delight for the pack of wolves inside Molyneux, the ball goes wide to the right we've played 49 minutes in the second half and 42 seconds but no more Paracetamol for Pep please Wolverhampton Wanderers have beaten Manchester City again and in doing so have crushed any remaining Manchester City aspiration of catching Liverpool only a collapse of Devon Lock any power Newcastle United in the 90s proportions can stop Liverpool from winning the title now City are third and they are 14 points behind Liverpool have a game in hand and the way Liverpool are playing it's effectively a 17-point lead at the halfway stage. Wolverhampton Wanderers have come back from 2-0 down to do the double over City in the top flight for the first time since 1961 on an absolute belter of a night at Molyneux. It has finished Wolves 3, Manchester City 2.